Hello and welcome to Yakking with Yak, a young person's theatre podcast brought to you by Theatre 31, managed by Icon Theatre and presented by us, the Young Artists Collective. We are the Young Artists Collective, also known as Yak, and we are here to talk to you about all things theatre. We'll be keeping you up to date with everything happening at Theatre 31 and Icon Theatre. We will be reviewing shows, conducting interviews, sharing some creations, playing games and having a good old chat. Welcome to the first podcast, Yakking with Yak. Who actually put us in charge of the podcast, though? It was a stupid idea. It's, it's going to be a disaster. Well, oh, come on. I'm actually really excited about this. There's games. There's news. What else could you want? Please tell me. We're recording from the Brook Theatre. Which makes a change, because we're usually on Zoom and we, we, we are stuck at home doing nothing, apart from uh, theatre. But today we are all united in person for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Thanks for tuning to our first podcast. Enjoy. Enjoy! And now for the news. Jinx, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Coming up next, we've got all the latest news from Theatre 31 in Icon Theatre. Next up, we, we can announce a Christmas show f- for younger ages. It is a joint production of Leap Dance, Play and Words, Theatre Company, and the Brook Theatre, and it is called Little Fox's Christmas Garden. It's Christmas Eve, and in the cosy old bookshop, Little Fox is helping Big Fox put up lots of decorations. Suddenly, they receive an urgent message. An evil queen has cast a terrible spell, and Christmas may be gone forever. So begins a journey into an enchanted garden and an amazing, fantastical land with faraway fairies, mumbling moles and, of course, the evil queen herself. With interactive games, songs, dances, a thrilling storyline and larger-than-life characters, this show is designed to fuel the imaginations of small children and gently stimulate their senses. It's the perfect introduction to theatre for young audiences. Help Little Fox lift the spell, free the garden, and save Christmas forever. It sounds great. They do this collaboration yearly, and it's always fantastic. I'm excited to see it. Little Fox's Christmas Garden now. The show runs from the 3rd until Christmas Eve at the Brook Theatre in Chatham, and tickets are available to buy at www.medboytickets.live.co.uk. Next up. We have another commission. Another one. Another one! For this one, Theatre 31 has partnered with Square Pegs Art, who are working on opening a brand new youth theatre base in Medway, specifically for young people with learning disabilities, autism and social communication difficulties. They will be setting the group up as an extension to their own current programme of work, and they have already started engagement work with local SEND schools and charities to build up participant interest ahead of the new year theatre base opening in the new year. Square Pigs currently already run similar drama groups for young people and adults. Do they? Yeah, in Maystone and Canterbury. They are also residents here at the Brook alongside Icon Theatre, so they are particularly excited to finally be expanding their programme here in Medway. If you are interested in hearing more about this new group, or you know someone that might be, you can get in touch with Square Pegs via their website, www.squarepegsarts.com, on Instagram, at squarepegsarts, or on Facebook, search for Square Peg Arts. They also run a music programme and have a theatre company. You can check that out while you're there as well. Music as well. Yeah, music. Icon Theatre has a brand new show coming up in February called If Not Now. It has just recently been announced so we are able to share some information with you about the show and how you can potentially get involved. It will be a stunning large-scale outdoor movement and dance-based production that will feature a cast of a hundred performers, breathtaking visuals projected onto the walls of Rochester Castle, original new music and spoken words. In Icon's signature style, the production will be performed by professional dancers and parkour runners, alongside a collective of residents, including community groups, local schools and young people, supported by Icon Theatre's Theatre 31 programme. Influenced by the sweeping changes worldwide that have been unleashed through the response to COVID-19, 
If not now, we'll give voice to local stories and explore how communities can come together to challenge and transform poverty, prejudice and climate crisis and look at historical movements and moments which have launched extraordinary social changes, including the establishment of NHS and welfare states. That sounds really interesting. It's so impressive that there's so many people coming together to create this. There are actually lots of um, people, like over 100, and the teamwork sounds really cool. I bet it's going to be really fun. Yeah, definitely. If Not Now is an icon theatre, Medway Council and Theatre 31 co-commission. It's going to be directed by icon's very own Nancy Hurst in collaboration with the members of the community taking part and the projections are being designed by Novak. And ICON are currently looking for participants to get involved in the show. Join now, the opportunity is here for anyone. It could be you. Me? Of course. They are looking specifically for Medway-based groups, schools and individuals of all ages to be involved in the show. So, if you're an individual or group interested in acting, singing, dancing, backstage or front of house roles, they would love to hear from you. And you do not need to have any prior experience, just enthusiasm. You know you want to. If you want to find out more or get in touch with us, visit www.icontheatre.org dot uk slash productions and go to the if not now page and there has been some other really exciting work happening behind the scenes as well work started earlier this year on a new project co-commissioned by fifth 31 and cookham wood young offenders institute with the support of made away council fifth 31 believes that everyone regardless of their background should have access to the life-changing power of the arts so to celebrate that Theatre 31 hired spoken word artist Lady Unchained to lead the first term of theatre-based workshops at Cook and Wood. Inspired by personal experience, her mission is to prove that there is a life after prison. Four participants have worked with Lady Unchained over six sessions to devise a spoken word project. The sessions have provided a safe space where self-expression is celebrated and honest communication is encouraged. The same format will be used over the next couple of terms. The idea is that as the program develops, Theatre 31 can build lasting relationships and cultural engagement with its participants as they move on to the next chapters in their lives. The power of arts to transform a person's life has been proven time and time again. The key is getting the opportunity in the first place. You can listen to an interview on BBC Sounds, the Dominic King show with Lady Unchained. He talks about the program. And we are so excited to be able to share a reading of one of the original spoken word pieces in this episode performed by one of our Young Artist Collective members, Connor. Give it up for Connor. (laughs) Prison feels like a nightmare. It feels like a deprivation of power. It feels like a constant hell loop. It feels like a mountain to climb. It feels like a learning curve, an eye opener, and a dark tunnel with a light at the end. It smells like an abandoned warehouse. It smells like blood, sweat and tears. It smells like metallic objects and decaying paint. I'm here for being the angel on other people's shoulders and not having one on mine. I'm here due to the company I kept. I'm here due to my environment and I'm here due to not being able to say no. Home feels like a palace. It feels like a dream. It feels like security. It feels like pride. It feels like ownership. It feels like love. It feels like family. It feels like heaven. Home smells like jerk chicken. It smells of of mac and cheese. It smells like fresh linen. It smells like freedom. To get back home, I need to keep educating myself. I need to make myself available for opportunities. I need to fight this case I need to succeed in everything I do. Welcome to Creative Quarters. In this part of the episode, we will be sharing some of our youth-led creations, work we have written, devised, imagined and recorded. 
Next up, we are going to tell you a bit about the Yak project that is currently featured on the Theatre 31 digital stage. The digital stage features all of the fantastic digital creations that have been co-created with the young people since the start of the programme, including commissions with Paper Balloon, Sparks Echo and original work from my Young Artist Collective, amongst others. Head to www.theatre31.co.uk slash digital dash stage to check it out. But for now, we want to tell you a little bit about the Bedroom Cabaret. So lucky enough, we have some young artists with us. So Kay, can you tell me what exactly the Bedroom Cabaret is? The Bedroom Cabaret is um, a, a piece made by um, every, everyone in Yak, and specific groups had um, certain things to do, and it was just uh, what pieces of work that Yak created for everyone to see what Yak does. So Brooke, why was it called the Bedroom Cabaret? So obviously last year when we started, it was, you know, 2020, the pandemic, we couldn't meet up in person, we couldn't really go anywhere apart of our bedroom. So it only found natural for the theme to be about the bedroom, because that's where we spent most of our time. And so we just created um, a montage and a showcase about our bedrooms, therefore the Bedroom Cabaret. Okay, so what exactly were the films about? Well, we all had different recordings, like we all recorded our own things. So I'll tell you which one mine about, and everyone else can tell you about theirs. So mine was about being tired like the whole day, but then the second you go into bed, you're like wide awake. So you're like awake the whole night. So I um, recorded myself like throughout the day, just yawning kind of thing. And then we, like, we had opera music in the back while I was yawning, just to make it funny. And then I, um, when I, and then I went to uh, bed and I couldn't actually sleep. So I started talking about why I couldn't sleep and the reasons I want to go to sleep. And then I got so bored, I decided to uh, write a letter to Boris Johnson explaining I wanted to get out of the lockdown. So that was my recording. So my one was a little bit different to Wyatt's. Um, mine was about how you become a different person when you're around people and outside of the bedroom and then about who you are within the bedroom. And I used different, like, lighting techniques and montages of me hanging out with friends outside and then me on my own in my bedroom so to create the divide between who I am outside and who I am inside to demonstrate that. So my film explored my bedroom and the emotions that I felt within my bedroom throughout lockdown so the excitement when I watch one of my favourite films but then the absolute boredom and frustration that comes with finishing watching every film. So you're like, oh, what film should I watch? Well, I've watched all of them. So also about the isolation and the loneliness that comes with just being in your room alone when your friends don't really message because they're busy and just stuff like that, really. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So um, my group did t the, their own different pieces. Um, of their work to upload to the Bedroom Cabaret. Um, I, I did um, my piece about six children trapped with this one guy who goes crazy and who knows what will happen next. What was it like creating work during lockdown? It was definitely an interesting experience because normally when creating theatre and things you'd be on stage in front of an audience and at least that's my experience with it. Um, so it was quite interesting recording everything yourself and uh, doing it on your own basically but it also was nice having like full creative control over everything so you could, I could do something that I'd never done before and like direct and create my entire piece from start to finish that was quite nice well um the re I'm gonna add to that by saying that I enjoyed doing it at home because I um you kind of just had a bit of a laugh in money when you're home most of the time and then the covid lockdown stuff like that it was just nice to have a laugh and speak to people and just enjoy yourself really and um but you gain a bit of confidence because you ain't in person, sometimes you're more shy, so you gain more confidence. That's literally what I was thinking the first word that did come to my head was interesting because it's your room and when you think of performing and creating something you don't exactly think your room. But I quite liked it because you got to explore different angles around your room to create different effects and use creative lighting. I definitely agree with that, like the whole experience made me notice things in my room that I was just, it was just there and it helped, like, I see my room in a different way 
because I think of things about Yak now instead of just, it's a thing in my room. So we didn't just create the films, we also did little group projects which helped form the basis of Bedroom Cabaret. We did films in person for a song, that was quite fun. Yeah, that was definitely my favourite bit because we all individually filmed our own bits where we had people from toilet roll at me, um, hand sanitizer, masks as fashion accessories and it was just really fun. And I really liked seeing the end product because you got to see everyone's work just put into one compilation. And the song was also written by us, like as a group, and we all filmed different bits of it. Me and Wyatt, me and Wyatt weren't comfortable singing, so we did spoken parts of it, which helped create more of a storyline for the song. So that that, well, that that kind of was easier because some if you're not comfortable singing, you can see you a lot of ways around. You don't always have to sing. So Connor, what was your favourite part of the filming? Uh, like it's already been said, my favourite part was definitely being in our own space and being able to film what we want and it being portrayed in a like, creative way, ways that we did, I didn't even know could be creative. But also when, when we came together as a group and did group projects, definitely very good because we all had different ideas and we all contributed to one big idea which was quite cool. What about when you did all those different looks to Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. All the lightsabers. Oh, my lightsaber, my yes. Hood. <laughs> the hood. Oh, yeah, tell us about the hood. I have this massive blanket with a hood, which I wear absolutely everywhere, you know. It's so comfy. And we were throwing it over me. I was throwing it up and disappearing. We were doing everything you could possibly do with a blanket that could look funny. Oh, there were some bits that didn't make the cut as well. Yeah. None of the bits where they threw pasta at my face got into the film. So they didn't need to throw any pasta on me, but they still did. Uh, which was your favourite film of like other people? I think my favourite one was probably Holly's because it was such a pretty montage of all different aspects of her room and it was really creative and it create, it was quite a good insight into how other, like, how other people live, if that makes sense, and it was just, it was really pretty and it was really nice. Um, thanks Brooke, and um, I really like yours because I just, I found it really interesting, like the lighting, the montage, the speeding up of the clips i just really liked it because yeah it was just a really interesting take on like human life really um i, I quite like wyatt's wyatt's was quite cool it's very it's comical as well definitely the uh, opera and the, the boris johnson letter which was yeah so that was my favorite i'm uh, funny enough i was gonna say connor because i enjoyed his singing <laughs> his singing was good i'd like to specify what was the most awkward part for everyone? See, for me, the singing. <laughs> See, I volunteered to do it, but after I volunteered, I realised what I got myself into. And then when I was singing, I realised I should have chosen the speaking. But yeah, that was definitely the most awkward part for me. I have to disagree with that, because I actually really liked your singing. My most awkward like, thing I did was probably the day I moved up from, to, into the older group because that was so awkward because when we did that last little thing where we had to like move a little object around our house like around for three positions I literally had no idea what I was doing I didn't know anybody it was just really awkward to do The most awkward part for me was when I was taking on a character who was deathly afraid of Covid in like in a very over exaggerated way and I forgot to lock the bottle of Dettol spray and sprayed it all over my laptop all over the camera <laughs> And yeah, that, that was really fun cleaning that up. At least my computer's bringing the guests. <laughs> so if you want to catch all these extremely quite awkward moments, head to Theatre 31's digital stage. Thank you for listening. Bye. 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 <laughs>
show claimed to be an interactive participatory celebration of food and I think it very much was. Throughout the piece we got served a variety of different dishes from each of the participants' cultures um, and it was really engaging to be able to have that uh, physical and sensory aspect to a performance. It wasn't reliant on just a facial expression, it was reliant on your response to the situation and I think it completely achieved that. Um, in terms of its uh, sort of social and political aspects, I feel it was focused more on the immediate human connection as opposed to anything more ecological or political. Um, there wasn't much focus on sort of making us question our place within society, just sort of allowing us to have time to really engage with it and to really focus on who we are and who it is that makes us and gets us to where we are. Uh, and I think it didn't necessarily need to be more political or more ecological. It just needed to uh, allow itself more time, I think, to naturally enter those areas. Um, I think it could be developed in trying to engage the audience more within the process of eating. Um, there was this big point raised of not knowing whether or not you could interact with the participants and with the creatives as they gave you the food. Um, and I think there would be a really important sort of aspect to the piece of the different sort of social worlds of being the person who eats versus the person who serves. And I think uh, if, if there was time given to be able to really discuss the food one on one or just with the group set at your table, then that would really develop it a bit more. Uh, so aesthetically speaking, the piece was rather minimalistic. There were paper plates and a single glass and the majority of the atmosphere was built either by the performers themselves or from, uh, there were two video screens, I believe, and some uh, audio along with that. Uh, the, there was one sort of performer character who was very focused on the movement of the piece. They would mimic some of the videos and I found that very impactful and that that created this real sense of um, connection between mother and daughter despite the distance, which was, you know, quite beautiful and moving. Uh, but in terms of it feeling like a feast, it was more focused on the the stories and the narrative of the food as opposed to the presence of the food and the presence of the performers in relation to the audience. There could have been a little bit more interaction between um, what it is to be eating in that moment as opposed to what the food means to them specifically. There were four cast members in the room and one connected via uh, video and audio who had created work throughout the process and sort of intended to be there but because of the way the world is right now wasn't able to be. Um, the performers that were in the room, three of which were sort of volunteers from the community who had been part of the research and the development of the piece, who had really been impactful within its creation and who um, brought in a real sense of humanity to it and it being very personal to them because it was their stories that they were telling it wasn't as if it was a script that they had been given and um, the fourth performer was a professional um i don't know quite what to call her a professional performer uh, they engaged less with the audience but focused more on creating a sort of dynamism to the piece and that was the sort of aspect of the piece that felt more professional and that felt more produced as opposed to the rest of it, which felt very organic and truthful. Also, we saw the three volunteers step out of their roles behind the kitchen area. Uh, one of them took to a microphone, the other one joined in with a movement exercise, and I think that really helped to blend the boundaries between professionals and uh, participants and audience members, and it made the whole piece feel a lot more fluid. It's definitely important to tell stories of a whole diverse range of backgrounds and to really engage with them in a way that is truthful and not as imposed by the long existing, long standing residents of Canterbury. I think that's really important, um, as it should be for any area. But I also think that there's something to say for including professionals within work. I think that um, there are so many professionals and there are so many migrant professionals who deserve to really have a voice and to really tell their own stories. Um, so I don't fully know if it's a good thing to be using non-professionals, but I think it's certainly an interesting take and it really, it formulated the piece and it made this piece what it was. 
I think in traditional theatre, products are valued very highly, mostly because they are highly valuable. They can be sold and commercialised for an awful lot of money. Um, and I'm not sure that this piece has too much of a commercial th- uh, commercial theatre feel, but I think it definitely could still be a profitable product because I think it was really impactful and I think a lot of people would enjoy it and want to engage with it. Um, and getting to see the process of it and getting to see and hear about how they made it and how they came to the conclusions that they came to through production was really, it sort of fleshed out the piece and it made it feel more real and more truthful than perhaps if we had just seen it and then it had just been a process of people providing you food and you eating and talking about the food. Um, There was definitely something real and truthful about the way that it was handled and about the fact that you could tell it was a work in progress, but also that even the final product of this piece is going to be very personal and very individual to whichever participants are participating. This is going to sound very artsy-farty, but my view of theatre is that it should be that very human connection and that it should rely on uh, audience and performer or participant engagement and that it should be very driven by emotion as opposed to driven by aesthetic and driven by theatrics as it were um so i think that the way that the show was produced and the way that the show that we got to see was uh presented was really beautiful and it was really what it should be i think that especially when handling a topic such as migration and uh family relationships and food those topics all are incredibly personal and i think that they deserve to be treated in such a personal way that the piece managed to do. I think that if we'd had something more theatrical, more traditional, if there were more um, light effects and there was more of a stage and more of an audience seating area, I think that would have felt too too commercialised and too divisive as opposed to very inclusive, which I think this story has to be because otherwise it's putting something onto a different area than the humanity of what it is to eat. If I had to summarise my opinion of this show into one word, it would be that it was engaging. The piece was free, we got to see it for free, and we also got to eat food, so not only is that value for money on a good day, that's amazing value for money for a piece of theatre. Considering the future of the piece, I really hope that the tickets remain to as accessible a standpoint as possible, or that a portion of the tickets are free or really low, uh, cost because one it's a community piece and I think that people who uh, when you start to discuss diversity you also have to discuss like financial diversity and whether or not people are able to access something or whether a piece is inclusive enough to allow them to be there and I think that everyone deserves to be there and to engage with this piece Um, but there are also the massive overheads of food and cooking and maintaining plates and cups and all of that that doesn't come with a traditional piece of theatre. I also wonder um, financially whether the people involved will be compensated in some way or whether the process of it will be their compensation. I would give this piece four out of five yaks, hopefully that, uh, hoping that in the future it would get five for adjusting some of the natural uh, restrictions that come with it being a work in progress. Next up is our chat section of the episode, where we have important discussions, debates, and chat general nonsense. So on today's segment, we're going to be discussing the new youth theatre groups, which recently opened. The three new ones are in Gillingham, Sheppey and Who, and there is one in Chatham, but that did already exist. So, Wyatt, how are you feeling about the new youth theatre groups and which ones do you go to? Well, I go to the Sheppey one and I'm um, enjoying it. I go with Brooke. We're currently making like a story kind of thing. Stop motion animation? Stop motion, that's the, that's the correct one. <laughs> a stop motion animation. And it's, uh, we're currently making, like, we just finished making that like, plasticine, like the different things we're doing, because we're doing Cinderella, Boy with a twist. twist. And there's a few twists, for example, uh, The Prince is a Roadman. Um, <laughs> That she doesn't want to marry him, and he um, he can't dance to save his life, so he always steps on her toes. So they have a twist. So over to you, Connor. Um, I go to the Gilliam uh, Youth Theatre, and the last couple of weeks we've been using uh, space. So we've been doing pieces in small areas, doing pieces in large areas, 
Uh, also been using lighting one week, make so you like create effects around lighting. Um, also did about where we can place the audience in certain um, scenes so we, the audience get what like vibe you're going for. So you could do like the recent one, we did we placed the chairs in like a bus because we were doing a scene on a bus so we placed the audience in like a bus sort of seating. So yeah, good. And to what we do in um, a youth theatre of Lily, we're doing improv at the moment. So Kay, what was your favourite game in youth theatre? I don't actually have a specific favourite uh, game, but Hot Potato, What Potato, it's a game where you pass a, a potato around and whoever says what potato, um, and then they say potato, for example, um, mashed potato, you have to be the best mashed potato you can. What's your favourite thing about your youth fitters? Um, my favourite thing is doing the improv. It's because you just get free reign of what you can do and sometimes you can come up with very wacky and very hilarious situations that can definitely include playing old men on buses. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely my favourite bit. My favourite bit is um, about how like everyone is included and everyone has to be included and um, we do some like really crazy things like um, um, in one of the things we did I was um, an astronaut and I was abducted by blood sucking aliens so it's really fun. That definitely <laughs> sounds very interesting. <laughs> sounds uh, very terrifying. Why should people join the youth theatres? Um, well, one, you get to meet new people who have the same interests in theatre as you do, and that's actually quite useful in the, yeah, just to network and stuff. Um, and also, you get to see lots of different activities, and it's just really interesting and really, really fun, and I would really recommend it because I really enjoy it. Theatre is fun, um because um, you get to meet more people, you get to play games, you get to learn new things like improv, and um, it's just f uh, for fun. You should join our youth theatres because it will provide you with an opportunity to meet new people who will have similar interests to theatre, and it will give you the opportunity to create things that you, that you can be proud of. Well, I think you should join youth theatre because first of all, it's completely free. Second of all, the instructor instructors there are very nice and you get to meet lots of new people which have very similar interests to you because everyone's here to have fun and do some drama. And now, game time! In this part of the show, we share with you one of our favourite games and demonstrate it with expertise. Or try to at least. Wow. Okay, so this week uh, we are going to play our infamous tongue twister game. How it works, I will be giving our contestants um, a tongue twister and they will say the tongue twister and nominate the next person. If they say it completely correctly first time, our points keeper Holly will give them one point. If they say it wrong, they get no points. If they say it really, really wrong, they get minus one point. Okay, and Holly, you can dish out at your leisure um, additional points based on yeah. speed and also just delivery, whatever you think deems additional points. You just dish them out, Holly. Contestants, are we ready to play? Yes. Um, yes. I will, not, I will say the tongue twister slowly one time for you to hear and then I will nominate someone to start and then you have to nominate the next person each time. Wait, okay. Can you put it in a chat? Yeah, I'm going to put it in the chat. This oh, is okay. our first one. Oh. Brisk, brave brigadiers <laughs> brandished broad, bright blades, blunderbusses and bludgeons, balancing them badly. And I would like us to start, please, with Brooke. Brisk, brave brigadiers brandished broad, bright blades, blunder bl br <laughs> blunderbusses and bludgeons. Balancing them badly. Uh, Wyatt. <laughs> Brisk, brave, brigadiers, brandished, broad, bright blades, blunderbusses, and blungeons balancing them badly. 
Brusque Brave Brigaders, Brandished Broads, Bright Blades, Blunder Brusses, and bl- Blungeons balancing them, ban- balancing them badly. Um, Yasmin. Brisk Brave Brigadiers, Brandished Broad, Bright Blades, Blunder Brusses, and Budgeons balancing them badly. <laughs> well done, everybody, for round one. We will wait for scores until the end. Here is our next one. And for this round, I would like you to say it as fast as you can. No. Uh, yes. Yes, please. Okay, oh, this gosh. one is, how can a clam cram in a clean cream can? And we're going to start with Yasmin. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Quiet. <gasps> How can a clam cram in a clean cream cram, Brooke? How can a clam cram in a clean cream clam? <laughs> <laughs> okay. How can I clam cram in a clean cream can? Oh, I think that was our best round. Wyatt, that's the best one you've ever done. He gave me all the inability to speak. <laughs> <laughs> it was small, you know. Small. <laughs> okay. Everybody, our next tongue twister is imagine an imaginary menagerie manager managing an imaginary menagerie. Oh. And we're going to start with Kay. Imagine an imaginary imaginary manager man- managing an imaginary menagerie. Um, Wyatt. Imagine an imaginary mage- menagerie manager managing an, an imaginary <laughs> menagerie. Lily, wait, Yasmin, sorry. <laughs> what is that M word? Menagerie. <laughs> Menagerie. Menagerie. Right. Imagine an imaginary menagerie manage, managing an imaginary menagerie. Brooke. Imagine an imaginary... Imag- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine an imag- imaginary menagerie manager managing an imaginary menagerie. I'm so much worse at it this week. I was so good last week. You were, but you were the queen last week. <laughs> oh. How the mighty have fallen. Okay, we have we have four more. Wow. Um yeah. now for a bonus point, um, if anyone would like to attempt to really wrap this, I will give five additional points. Um why I feel like you're in need of it. Then like, then obviously I'll give it a go. Give it a go. Bitter butter, books and butter, but the butter, it was bitter. She put it in her butter and it made her better, bitter. But a bit of bitter butter, that would make her better, bitter. She put a bit of butter, bitter than her bitter butter. She put it in her butter and her butter was not bitter. So it was better, bitter butter, but a bit of better butter. Hey! <laughs> Wait, can I just do it for fun to try to wrap it? I don't think Please. I will be able to. Please I don't do, think I'll Kay. be able to, though. You may as well give it a go. There are five additional points at stake. I'm going to have a drink first to, to clear my tongue up a bit. All right. Just Dr. Okay. Pepper. Oh, <clears throat> my favourite. My favourite too. Are you now um, nourished and ready to try your rap attempt? Uh, yeah. Betty Butter. Oh, Betty Butter bought some butter. No, I can't rap. It's a very difficult tongue twister. Does anyone think they are the winner? Wyatt, that's bold. Um, Okay, (laughs) the scores are as follows. In fourth place, with a very respectable five points, is Kay. Yeah, well, that's sad. It was very close, because with only two more points in third place was Brooke. With a questionably deserved nine points in second place is Wyatt. Oh. Well done. Was he awarded an additional five points, Holly? He was. So really, You're you last. would have come last. Well, I just, well it just proves I can rap. It you, proves you can rap. Absolutely. <laughs> and with ten points, our winner is Yasmin. Hey, hey, my hidden talent. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our podcast from all of us here at the Brook Beer. See you next time! Bye! Bye. I'm waving at the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye!
Theatre 31 programme and all its activities are totally free, so if you want to find out more about any of the opportunities mentioned in this episode or getting involved with the programme, head to www.theatre31.co.uk and don't forget to follow us on social media to keep up with what's going on. Follow us at theatre31 underscore on Instagram and Twitter and at theatre31 UK on Facebook. Theatre 31 is an exciting youth-led programme that gets young people across Medway and Sheppey involved in theatre. Managed by Icon Theatre, funded by Arts Council and in partnership with Medway Council, Kent County Council and Rural Opera House Bridge. Yakking with Yak is a self-produced podcast at Theatre 31, supported by Lily Vincent Franklin, Theatre 31's lead facilitator. Thanks for listening. Tune in next time for more Yakking with Yak. Wow.